thank you guys for tuning in today we're going to take a look at the 2023 honda accord sport this one is in the still night pearl color with black interior this is the first level that gets into the hybrid segment pretty much because if you go with an lx or you go to the ex there's no hybrid in those models it'll be the 1.5 turbo once you go sport exl sport l touring any of those four models hybrid only so this is going to have a two liter four cylinder engine with a hybrid um motor with your battery let's start off with the still night pearl color beautiful color you get up in there you can see all the pearl that's in there look at that wow really nice paint this is not the first time the still night pearls came to the cord the previous not the previous generation but the generation before the previous had when we had coupes uh, Steel Knight Pearl was an option on the coupes, which if you guys don't know, Honda redesigned the Accord for 23 and it's completely redesigned inside and out. New front fascia, new rear, everything. Everything's completely different. From my previous videos, the design is very controversial and a lot of people hate it, a lot of people don't like it, but this is where Honda is leading with the new generation. So you can see you have a wider grille on the Sport, you have a gloss black grille. You have full LED, high beam, low beam, turn signals, daytime running lights, no fog lights. There's no fog lights on the cord at all. And now the radar is in the H. Honda Sensing is still in all of the cords, but there's some like extra little goodies that you have to get the higher trims to get. Looking at the front, so you can see Honda went with a longer hood, slimmer A-pillar. They pulled the windshield back as well. Sport gets a moonroof now. Usually Sport don't get a moonroof. So that's different. You still get the black mirror caps. You still get these, uh, I believe these are 19s. Let me see. Yes, these are 235, 40, 19s on the Sport L, which looks exactly like this. It'll have the same wheel design, but it'll be full black. And it won't be a gloss. It'll be like a, like a satin black, I'll say, on the Sport L. Also, the Sport L will give you a rear diffuser where this regular Sport doesn't get that. Sport will have this chrome piece on top above the windows kind of wrap around the bottom piece will be just a regular flat black and you do have a capless tank so you push to open it push to close it when you lock the cord it'll lock this door so not anyone can just go in there and grab your grab your gas of anything and in the rear you have full um led so led turn signals brake lights and reverse lights usually honda has a combination of regular bulbs and LED, but full LED on the cord. Get the little baby H in the back, one of my favorite parts. I love the rear end and the sport will be in chrome. Hybrid badges in chrome too. If you, you can black those out though, if you wanted to. And in the rear, the diffuser, there isn't really a diffuser, just a additional piece of the bumper. If you get a sport L, then you get the rear diffuser. But there's no exhaust, exposed exhaust. So you can see there's a turn down over there. And that's it. So you get one exhaust because this is not the turbo engine. It's the two liter non-turbo. You do have smart entry. Actually, let me show you guys the keys to the Sport. And it's the new design that Honda is going with, with all of their vehicles now. HRV, CRV, Accord, Pilot. And the Sport will give you a remote start. Previously, you will have to get a Sport, a Sport L. You will have to get a, a special edition Sport to get remote start. So you have smart entry. So if you tap this little line right here, that'll lock the door. And then the key is on you and you put your hand in there, unlock it for you. And the Sport now will have blind spot, which is an upgrade from the previous Accord. Cause the previous Accord Sport, blind spot was not a thing. You will have to get, I believe, an EXL and up to get that. Now, Honda is having a chip uh, shortage issue. So even though this is supposed to have blind spot, it doesn't because you can get a, a sport with blind spot and a sport without blind spot. But I'll go over that once we go over the, the window sticker. So as soon as you open the door, full cloth seats. That's another difference from the Sport L. Sport L gives you full leather. But even though it's full cloth, they're comfortable, they're durable. Um, pretty much the same seats as in the EX and the LX. So very comfortable, I like these seats. The driver is a 10-way power, looks like. So lumbar in and out, front and back for your back, forward and back for the whole seat. So you can go up and down and the front portion of the seat can go up and down on the passenger side the seating is manual on the sport so you have a manual lever here for your front and back and you have the bar you need to pull your seat forward and back and that's it you can't go up and down let's get in here 
and check it all out. So, welcome to your Accord. You have auto up down for the driver and passenger window. For the rear, you just hold them. Power locks, power windows. Nothing really going on this side. You do have a vent here and got some actually some premium feeling clicks. And you have the new mesh design that's with the cords now as well. Every cord was gonna have that. You have your hood and your trunk button down there. The sport will give you the aluminum pedals. So driver, driver, gas, brake, and even the dead pedal, which is cool. A lot of uh, vehicles actually exclude the, the dead pedal and always have the sportier pedals up there. So it's cool that Honda even changed the dead pedal there. The, lead, the steering wheel is leather wrapped. You can see the stitching in the middle. Feels good in the hands. It's a lot more better than the LX and EX with that tougher rubber material. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. So you do have the wider uh, touchscreen display on sport and up. So if you get the LX and EX, you have a smaller seven inch. And then now I believe this is a 12 inch, if I'm not mistaken. It's actually a 12.3 inch to be exact. So we'll get into that in a second. You have a 10 inch driver screen right in front of you. And I've went over the screen so many times. So you do have a control wheel here for that right pod and a control wheel here for the left pod. Very configurable, a standard in all of the cores. Even the LX get that, which is a, uh, that, that's cool. That's that's cool that they throw in some tech in the base model. You do have auto headlights, parking lights and on, no fog light switches and your wiper switches on the right side. What's cool with the ECVT this year is it feels like it's shifting. Like it acts like it's shifting when you're driving and it's smooth and quiet and everything like that. But yeah, it, it acts like it shifts. I don't know, I think that's a cool feature than just having the long, just, you know, it feels like the clutch is slipping type feeling. So you do have that guy. Volumes on this side, next track, previous. You do have voice command. And this pod, all it will show you is your, uh, your sources. So zoom up in there to give you guys an idea. So you have Alexa, smartphone, that's like Apple CarPlay and your auto, Bluetooth, USB, AM, FM phone so all your basics on on this side and when you come to the right side this is going to be all your additional information so power flow gauge settings vehicle stability control brightness all the good stuff oh i'm cooking it here let's turn the turn turn the ac on a little bit the engine kicked on because i turned on the temperature and put it 72 degrees that's one thing with these hybrids is at first when you turn them on they're very quiet you have to get used to them if you're not used to having a hybrid you can have your safety features here so road departure or your front collision braking, blind spot is not an option because they don't have that anymore. And then you also have, let's go back to the menu. You have your oil life and your maintenance, who have your seat belts on, driver attention, navigation, so you have a compass. You don't have a destination in there, which is cool. Speed and time. Range and fuel is what everyone mostly gonna use. So this is a full tank right now and it has 588 miles. I mean, that's assuming you continue to drive like a grandma, but very fuel efficient and you're less likely to go to the pump with this uh, trim level. So back to the 12.3 inch touchscreen display, <laughs> I have to say that to be exact. The 12.3 touchscreen display, I'll say is broken down to three parts. You have your shortcuts on the left side that always stays there. You have your middle screen here that you can scroll through different apps. And then you have this helper screen over here that views different information. This reminds me of Acura so much. Reminds me of my RDX actually. So you have music, which you're listening to, you have a compass, you have the clock, and then you also have the power flow, whichever one you wanna leave it on. And on the main screen here, you have phone, FM, Bluetooth, um, trip computer, power flow, Alexa, Apple CarPlay Android Auto, and also Apple CarPlay Android Auto is wireless, starting from sporting up. So you can still plug your phone in or you can use the wireless, it's up to you. You have USB, you have built-in Wi-Fi that's on the Sport now, Honda Link, which is built in, and the Honda Link, it's has been updated. I think I'm going to make a video specifically on Honda Link because it's actually a cool uh, feature that they give you. And then you have your display compass. So you're most likely going to be on the main screen here, but even if you come here and go into vehicle settings, the whole menu has been redesigned so you can see there's a picture of you know your cord, and I believe you can actually change the color of this is it change view no or is it menu 
Yeah, it's menu. So you can go there, go to body color, go pick the Steel Knight Pearl, and go back, oh, and then and then ch put the view back. There we go. So now we have a blue accord in the menu, which is a nice a nice touch. It's pretty cool. You have your tire pressure modern collaboration. So if you put air back in the tire, you can reca uh, recalibrate the system. And I'm not gonna fully go through everything here. I think I'm gonna make a separate video going through every menu on this screen, but it's actually really cool. You heard the engine kicked on over just now. I'm gonna put it in reverse so you see guys can see what a backup camera looks like. So it doesn't take up the whole screen. You still have the helper screen that's just blank there. And you do have a wide angle. You have your normal and your top down. If you had blind spot, then you also have a cross traffic button here, but we don't have blind spot, so we don't have cross traffic. And then your brightness over there. But since it's on this wider screen, it's pretty nice. The resolution could be better. Um, I, Honda just took the previous Accord's backup camera, reused it, but now it's on a bigger screen. So because they did that, it looks a little greenier, but it's not that bad. You have trajectory too. I forgot to show you. If you turn the wheel, let's go back in reverse. Turn the wheel, it'll show you where you're going as well. And then I don't know if you guys can hear this little hum. So that's the sound that the cord plays when you're crawling around the parking lot because it's so quiet, it'll warn people that you're coming. Sounds like some type of welcome, like aliens arriving or something like that. I don't know. It's pretty cool. I like it. Back into park. So for your climate control down here, there are physical buttons. They're not on the screen, which I like because a lot of manufacturers are putting these big screens and everything's in the screen. Honda wanted to like have a clean interior, but not focusing everything on a screen, but not having too many buttons either. So you do have your knobs over here. So you have driver's temperature over here, passenger's temperature over here, your fan speed or on and off. You do have dual zone climate control and driver and passenger can have two separate temperatures. And then you have your air circulation, you know, your modes, front defrost, rear defrost, AC on and off, all of your basic goodies that, you know, you're familiarized with climate control. Two USB-Cs now, instead of USB-A, USB-A is gone. And you have this big, uh, bigger, actually, um, storage here. You can put anything you want. Most likely you can have your phone there. You come down to your shifter, you have park, reverse, neutral, and drive. So basic settings for your transmission. This is leather wrapped too, with like the steering wheel on the shifter. Your cup holders is simple. I think this one's smaller than that one, but you can have both and your phone probably can sit in the middle. Not too sure. You do have drive modes. And then once you toggle it, you have um, individual, sport, normal, and econ. I'll show you better on this screen actually. So econ, normal, sport, and individual. So with individual, it's pretty cool because you can customize the steering or the acceleration or even the, the uh, Honda Sensing. So oops, I might need to come off of it. Let's go back to individual. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. And you have powertrain, steering, adaptive cruise control, and gauges. You can even change the gauges to red if you wanted to. Um, you can adjust the adaptive cruise control to normal or econ, more fuel efficient. Um, the steering, you can have a more aggressive steering. And then the powertrain, so how the transmission performs. And it even shows the battery here, so it shows a little bit more power from the battery to the engine, to the wheels, which is pretty cool. But I don't know if you may mess with that, you may not. Everyone may just keep it on normal or econ. I think it's personal preference there. You do have electronic parking brake and your brake hold as well. The heck is, you got a little flower stuck in there. That's just nice. It's not too wide, not too long. And you have your your glove box there. Simple glove box. Love the mesh design. That's in all the new Hondas now. Started in the Civic. And this is kind of a, this is actually soft, but not that soft. And that's actually soft too. So they're not like just fully hard. Even on the door, okay but yeah this is definitely soft but let's jump into the back seat so rear door is open pretty wide easy to get in and out all right we're gonna close the door so back here just hard hard plastic back here it's not as soft i mean the arm rest is soft but everything else is hard plastic you do have a Seat pocket behind the passenger, but none behind the driver. No USB-Cs back here and no air vents. And then you see the moonroof up there. I actually forgot to show you guys that when we were up there. Um, also, no auto-dimming rear view mirror. 
and no home link, but you can add it as an accessory. You do get an armrest back here with cup holders, so that's cool. And it's spacious back here too. That's one reason why you probably want the court over the Civic. You have way more leg room, way more headroom. Even though, even though the roof have that kind of fastback design, so to say, you do have some cutouts for your taller people there, which is pretty cool. Show you guys the front cockpit. The interior is beautiful. Like I love the new design, even though a lot of people hate the outside. Inside is really nice, and this is the nicest driving Accord I've driven so far. That's among all the trim levels. The Touring is my favorite because of the, the tech that you get in that, but it's actually pretty nice. Let's jump out of here. And let's look in the trunk space. Trunk opens all the way for you, because you have the strut. And you can see the seats do fold down. They're 60-40, so you have a handle there and a handle there. One thing about the hybrids is you don't get a spare tire. So if we look under the floor here, you get a flat fix kit and some additional storage, and that's pretty much it. And here, a funnel. If you want a spare tire, you have to get an LX or an EX. But it's still pretty spacious. You can put a lot of stuff in there. Before we head to the brochure, I'm gonna show you guys sunglass holder. You have your moonroof control, you have your SOS button up here, individual map lights and their LED, your vanity LED as well. And you also have your moonroof. No panoramic roof on the cord, but pretty nice. Just to go quickly over the window sticker, this is a 23 Accord Hybrid Sport. It says BD because there is no blind spot on this one. And you do pay 455 more for Steel Night Pearl. 46 city 41 highway for the gas mileage msrp is 32,895. if you go with a model without blind spot the hybrid sport has everything that lx and the ex has and it has obviously the the hybrid powertrain you know you get the two liter um lithium ion battery pack the ecvt and what the power shifters i forgot to tell you guys the power shifters are your deselection selectors like it says here so you're able to adjust how much rigid and braking you use. Um, four mode drive system. So the normal econ sport individual starts in the sport, low emissions, motion and management system. You get the 19 inch alloy wheels and then 235, 40, 19 tires. You get the gloss black deck like spoiler. You get the gloss black power side mirrors, the 12.3 touchscreen display, which is the widest display I think we've had so far in Honda. You have the wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto starts in the sport. You have Alexa built in. You have HD radio, sport pedals, leather wrap steering wheel. And, and at the end, they did add that heated seats is not included because on here, it says it has everything the EX has plus that. But one thing the EX is going to have that the sport doesn't have is heated seats. So I see why they added here at the bottom. Let's jump into the pricing now. From the Sport to the Sport L, it can be a little confusing as far as the lineup because the Sport L do cost more than the EXL, but the EXL has some features that the Sport L doesn't have. So pretty interesting how they did that. But let's jump into the Sport and we're gonna look at, you know, one engine choice, of course. So here's all the colors. You have black, silver, you have the platinum white, radiant red, the night pearl, which we just looked at in the urban gray. And these four colors are 455 more. And actually, let's show you in total. So this is pricing with the blind spot. You can't build an Accord without blind spot from Honda's website. So um, I forgot how much the difference was, but your dealership will know. But yeah, so $31,895 is the base price plus the color, $455. And destination handling, you're about $33,400 for all together. Plus you get the two-year complimentary maintenance plan, which is cool with Honda. But let's kind of go back and see... So here are the HPD, HPD wheels you can add. Don't give you an uh, example, but that's what they look like. I think Honda's still working on the website because certain things you can't see. And then, like I said, there's a lot of accessories that you can add. Um, I know the biggest one is the auto dimming rear view mirror. So home link, you can add that guy. No USB C's you can add to the back. So on the previous, I think the previous Accord, you're able to add these, but can't anymore. Electronics, you can add a wireless phone charger though. 
comparing this to the 2022 accord sport um you do get a little bit more in this so one the sport was a 1.5 and then they can't i think they released the sport hybrid in the 22s like the last generation like 20 i think in 22 if i'm not mistaken or 21 um 1819 didn't have a sport hybrid but just the sport 1.5 you didn't have a moonroof, you didn't have blind spot, you didn't have remote start, you didn't have smart entry. So walk with just yeah, this should have walk with auto lock as well. So and that wide screen. So and the full digital ten so the sport actually got a huge upgrade from twenty two to twenty three. And there's a lot more goodies you get now. So it's a good package. Like I was saying in the video, this is one of the best driving of cords I've driven so far. Like if you think this car is ugly. I recommend to just drive one and you're going to love how it drives. You're going to love the interior. You might have to get used to the looks. It's going to be it's up to you, but I will end everything here. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. We're going to do a lot more chords on this channel. So if you're not subscribed, if you didn't like the video, drop a like, subscribe. And if you have any questions or if you own one of these, are you going to get one? You have an order or just tell me what you think. Drop a comment below. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to catch you guys in the next walk around.